This week on Beacon Web News, May Craig checked out the Halloween event put on by SAC. And Beacon reporter Natalia Giacomozzi went to the polls to speak with North Adams residents about the election. That's all coming up next on Beacon Web News. Hello and welcome to the November 4th episode of Beacon Web News. I'm Sim Kerr. Yesterday was election day and nationwide we've seen much higher turnouts than in past elections. North Adams was no exception with an approximately 80% voter participation. Beacon's managing editor Natalia Giacomozzi was at the polls in North Adams yesterday to see what voters are thinking. Natalia Giacomozzi here for Beacon Web News. We are in downtown North Adams at St. Elizabeth of Hungary Parish where local citizens are going to cast their ballots for election day. According to the New York Times yesterday, almost 100 million Americans participate in early voting across the country before election day. Uh, this is probably going to be the largest turnout I've ever seen in my life really? at any of these things. We had. We had over 40% of just mail-ins, so that's huge. Usually on a uh, federal election in North Adams, if you can get above 60, it's a good number, 60%. We had over 40% with just the writings, just the early voting. So I expect, yeah, it's going to be a big turnout. Well, it's it's, it's it been very steady all day. I think a lot of people perceive that we're at a um, turning point in American democracy and that we could lose a great deal in this election and they understand that it's really really important to protect um, our democracy and that's and that you know and our, our sort of continued um, <laughs> you know <laughs> peace happiness health all of those things feel like they're on the line right now and, and tensions are high I think everybody knows that it's uh, you know it's like the crisis of our time and uh, I voted two weeks ago myself. Um, I just think that everything is on the line with this election. And I think people are aware of that. I think the division is sad, but we're divided here. We're divided in this country and we're divided here. Besides presidential and Senate candidates, the Massachusetts ballot contains two questions. Question one, wants to expand the state's 2013 right to repair law by giving independent mechanics broader access to telemechanics data in vehicles. Question two seeks to make Massachusetts adopt ranked choice voting and replace the current plurality system in which the, can the one candidate with the most votes in an election wins. I'm usually out here at the polls every couple years supporting somebody that I believe in mm -hmm. and this year I'm supporting uh, yes on two instead of standing here with a sign for one of the um, presidential nominees I, I'm mm -hmm. supporting changing the system basically is what I'm pushing for this year. Two years ago I was out here uh, actually at these same polls collecting signatures to try to get ranked choice voting on the ballot in Massachusetts and now here I am two years later holding the sign hoping people will vote for it. From the Beacon and Beacon Web News, I'm Natalia Giacomozzi. The Center for Student Success will be hosting Mic Drop post-election edition on Thursday, November 5th from 4.30 to 6 p.m. through Microsoft Teams. To find the link, go to mcla.presence.io. This will give students the chance to voice how they feel about the election. The Multicultural Resource Center will be hosting a post-election support series. The events will run from November 9th to November 13th in Murdoch 218 from 6 to 9 p.m. The first night of the support series, Merck will be hosting Unpacking the Presidential Election through a Paint Night. This event will be on Monday, November 9th from 6 to 9 p.m. in Murdoch 218. The second night of the series will be Self-Care Through Writing. This event will be on November 10th from 6 to 8 p.m. in Murdoch 218. Both events have a max capacity of 14 people. To register, email Arlene Theodore at arlene.theodore at mcla.edu. Governor Charlie Baker announced on Monday new targeted measures to slow down the rise of COVID-19 cases. According to a press release from the governor's office, COVID cases are up by 278% and hospitalizations have risen by 145% since Labor Day. The new orders and advisories will begin on Friday, November 6th. 
These include a new stay-at-home advisory. Residents are asked to stay home between the hours of 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. The press release stated the advisory allows for activities such as going to work, running critical errands to get groceries and address health needs, and taking a walk. Certain businesses and activities are expected to close by 9.30 p.m. And, remain, and may reopen at 5 a.m. These businesses include restaurants, liquor stores, indoor and outdoor events, adult-use marijuana sales, not including medical marijuana, theaters, and performance venues, youth and adult amateur sports activities, golf facilities, recreational boating and boating businesses, outdoor recreational experiences, casinos and horse tracks, driving and flight schools, zoos, botanical gardens, wildlife reserves, nature centers, gyms and fitness centers, indoor and outdoor pools, and museums. Indoor gatherings at a private residence cannot exceed a limit of 10 people. Outdoor gatherings at a private residence cannot exceed 25 people. If this order is violated, there will be a fine of $500 for every person over the limit. More information on the orders and advisories can be found on the Massachusetts website at mass.gov. MCLA had its own set of restriction changes regarding the increase in COVID cases. The Beacon's editor-in-chief, Brian Rhodes, and I spoke with Katherine Holbrook, Vice President of Student Affairs, on these new restrictions. As we watch the cases rise across Massachusetts and across other states, the concern is, uh-oh, we know people are going home. We talked about a travel protocol at the beginning of the year, and we chose not to put anything like this in. There are schools that are requiring people saying, you can't leave or you have to tell us. And we said, that's just ridiculous. People have to go out to work. We said, we'll watch it. So as it began to rise, we said, okay, it's probably time to consider what do we do with our residents to log that they're leaving and determine that when they come back, not that we, not that we don't want you to leave or you can't leave, um, but when you come back, do you have to test? Do you have to test and stay in quarantine? How do we make sure that if you travel, you don't infect other people in the residence halls? For students who travel to a high-risk area, they must quarantine for a minimum of six days and produce two negative test results. It's because right now, because Berkshire County is um, relatively safe, um, everything in this part of the state, except for way down in, I think it's Hampshire, well, in the Springfield area, all of this part of the state has been um, either what is it white or gray so really in good shape right but because we've been relatively safe our contact at the department of public health has been um very helpful to us in helping us sort of figure out what's possible and so there are when when an area is safe essentially um you can test about five to seven days out and be reasonably sure from a, the time a person comes back. So you come back yesterday. We will test you right away just to get the first test done. But usually a test on day five or day seven um, is usually pretty definitive. If that's a second negative, then, then you're okay. And you went someplace safe in the first place. There are other people, other schools that won't even do those that level of testing. We do it out of a precaution for the community um, if you went somewhere safe with not a lot of cases and you didn't do anything unsafe, in theory, you don't have to be tested at all. However, you're living with other people and we want to check that out. For those students who have to quarantine on campus, they will be granted quarantine meals that come out of the student meal plan. That's, it, it, that's one of the reasons that seniors were required to have a meal plan, the people in the townhouses, because let's say you're on a 14-day quarantine, you're getting a lot of meals delivered. Um, it's always out of the meal plan. It, it's not your swipes. Um, it is It is just sort of a, I don't even know if they count it. I, I don't even know if they swipe your meal, but when I tell them, you know, that you're on quarantine from this period until further notice, you fill out the form, you're able to, you know, order from the menu, um, you know, order vegan or vegetarian, order gluten-free, whatever special needs there are, and you just keep ordering yourself and it gets delivered until we release you from quarantine. So if you, let's say it's a senior in the townhouses and they've used up all of their meal plan already um, and all of their points, um, because they were on the meal plan, they will still get quarantine meals. It's, a, it's something that we guarantee to everybody. The biology department will have clinical nutritionist and wellness educator, Christina Garner, talk about medical nutrition counseling. The event will be held virtually on Thursday, November 5th from noon to 12.45 p.m. There will be a Teams meeting link for the event. 
The Institute of Art and Humanities will be offering an IAH mini-grant to support student-led projects and activities that are aimed to address notions of inclusion, diversity, equity, and access. Students who receive the grant will be offered $300 to $1,000. Both individual and group applicants are accepted. The deadline to apply for the grant will be via email on November 11th from noon to midnight. Want to challenge your queer knowledge in a game of Kahoot? Queer Student Union will be hosting Queer Kahoot. The event will be on November 7th from 6 to 8 p.m. in Church Street Center Social Hall. The doors will open at 4.45 p.m. and there is a maximum occupancy of 21 students. There will be two rounds, the first at 6 and the second at 7, and a chance to win a t-shirt, a flag, mugs, or gift cards. For more information, email jr7694 at mcla.edu. There was much to do on campus on Halloween. Reporter May Craig checked out a few of the events that SAC and other clubs put on. On Saturday, October 31st, SAC threw a variety of Halloween events in the quad. I spoke with a few members from eBoard to discuss the process of what went into creating the event. Basically, this event kind of just like came out of my brain. I was like, I picked this night to be the planner for SAC, and I was like, okay, I have to go big or go home. And um, so we're pulling this all together, following protocols. Like everyone has to wear like a real face mask. Um, we're making sure everything's like six feet apart, everyone's socially distant, we're sanitizing in between things, we're not like handing out food um, that's like unwrapped. Um, all our candy's in like goodie bags so people don't like touch the candy before they take it. So we're being like super safe. We have everyone, all hands on deck, all of our e-board and we have 11 members on our e-board. Everyone's working together tonight. We also have other clubs. We have um, Black Suit Union Christian Fellowship, Crafting Club, Yorick, admissions. We have a lot of clubs all working together um, to put this event together. Um, we chose the quad because we wanted a nice outdoor location just because it's safer for COVID and um, also so people could get out of their rooms and get some fresh air because there haven't really been a lot of in-person events on campus because um, of COVID and I thought that this would be a really nice way for people to get out of their rooms and have some fun and it's a safe alternative to you know doing something potentially like COVID dangerous tonight. We have Halloween Kahoot, we have a game night, we have spooky caricatures, a get out themed escape room, we have a cakewalk, a soda walk, pumpkin painting, ghost tours, Victorian ghost tours, and zombie time. That Christian Fellowship is hosting is the Harvest Game Night. It's kind of a break from all the traditional Halloween-y stuff, you know, not everyone likes um, all the scares and the Halloween movies and the ghost tours, so we wanted to have a, another option for those who wanted to get out on Halloween, but who maybe didn't want to do something like go to the Halloween movie marathon. I've enjoyed most so far is watching Nexus do their dress rehearsal. I'm really excited for their routine that they're going to do at 11 o'clock. And just seeing the smiles on everybody's faces, and everybody's walking away with their hands full of goodies that they're taking away. So it's been good to see everybody having a good time. The interaction in the fellowship amongst other students, it's been a really tough semester just so in being inside a space where we can just laugh and enjoy ourselves safely but have a great time has been wonderful. For Beacon Web News, I'm Meg Craig. And now, from the Beacon. MCLA is waiving the ACT and SAT requirement for fall 2021 and fall 2022 applicants. A new pilot policy, test blind, test free, will begin for the fall 2021 applicants as well. The Elizabeth and Lawrence Badney's Environmental Issues Lecture will be on Thursday, November 19th at 4 p.m. virtually this year. You can check out these and other stories from The Beacon at theonlinebeacon.com or pick up a copy all over campus. The winter parking ban went into effect as of November 1st and will end April 15th, 2021 for the City of North Adams, according to the North Adams Police Department Facebook page. The ban states that no vehicles may be parked on the street between the hours of 1 a.m. to 6 a.m. any day. Officers will issue a paper warning for the first week of the ordinance. Residents are encouraged to find other means of parking their vehicles. November 6th through the 8th will be the last weekend of the MCLA Theater Department's first online performance titled The Race. The Friday and Saturday shows will begin at 8 p.m. and the Sunday show will begin at 2 p.m. All shows will be done via Zoom. To reserve a spot, go to www.mcla.edu slash theater. More on this story next week. That's it for this week. To stay up to date with BWN, you can follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash MCLA BWN. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.